Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Katie and I live with my family of four in the southwest of England. I have got my Q&A video for you today. I've been promising this for a little while and I finally, it's today, <laughs> I'm videoing it. Just bear with me if I can't see because, you know, you know I can't see very well. So I'm trying to read the questions from what I've written down. Often I can't even read my own writing. So anyway, oh, let's get comfortable. I hope you're all having a really great day, by the way. Sunshine's come out here, which is wonderful. A nice break from the rain. So let's get right into the questions. My first question or a couple of questions. Actually, I've got a few from you. Um, I think you, your name is Nayumi. Apologies if I've pronounced that wrong. Um, but your question, number one, is what is a dish or food or snack that takes you back to a fond memory and why? Which is a lovely question. It's one that's made me have a little think. The first memory that's come to mind, I mean, we all have that like dish or certain food type thing that makes us think of something from when we were a child. Um, and rice pudding, either at my parents' house when I was growing up, I remember having Sunday dinner in the in our dining room, all sat around the table. One of my grandparents was often there. We'd, my mum would be cooking a homemade rice pudding, absolutely delicious. I love homemade rice pudding. You can't beat it. It's just delicious. And also at my my dad's mum's house, my nan's house, um, having dinner around there and having the, a rice pudding as well. So definitely rice pudding is one of those really lovely comfort foods that reminds me of childhood. Um, yeah, so that answers that question. I mean, there's absolutely tons. I could probably, if I sat there and wrote a list, I could probably think of loads, but that's the first one that, that came to my mind. Okay, question number two from Jane. How long have you been on YouTube? I actually can't remember. It's definitely before Christmas because I did I did a few little shorts at Christmas time. I remember that, but I don't think it was till um, October, November time. I think maybe that I put the house tour video on. I did. A, I've done a, a random couple of videos before that that are still up on my channel where I cut my husband's hair or I tried to in lockdown. This was like a long time ago now, a few years ago now, um, and also I did like a. When I first found out I was uh, celiac, um, I tried to make some gluten-free cupcakes, the first attempt. I've left the video up because it's just a funny little reminder to myself. Um, but previously to that, my children, who are now 17 and 15, they used to have a YouTube channel quite a few years back now. And they were doing pretty well, actually. They did some really funny videos. And I'm going to give a special mention to Rebecca because she's naturally hilarious. And you know what it's like when they get to secondary school sort of age um, and the peer pressure and all that, they kind of stopped doing it mainly because Rebecca didn't want to be on video anymore, which is fine. It's her choice, absolutely her choice, her life. Um, and that is her decision. So I'm disappointed that they stopped because they could have done really well I think but that's their decision and a few years later I've kind of decided that I want to start doing it I mean I was trying to edit their videos and filming them anyway for them so it's just taking that step from being behind the camera to being in front of the camera and I wasn't necessarily comfortable with that because I've been I'm a shy person I'm, a, I'm definitely an introvert around people that know me I can seem confident but um, I'm really not a confident person and I've always been quiet. I was voted the quietest girl in the year in my school yearbook. So there we go. This kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone quite a lot. Um, it's taken me a lot of courage to get out there. But it's almost like it seems easier doing it in front of a camera than it does standing up on a stage in front of loads of people. Even though I know that potentially hundreds of people are watching my videos, it doesn't feel so doesn't make me feel so insecure because I know that I'm not actually standing up in front of you all because that would terrify me. I definitely wouldn't want to do that. But anyway, I'm glad that you all watched, so please keep doing that. <laughs> so yeah, I've probably only been on probably nearly a year now. I would have thought that I've been on YouTube. A couple of questions now from Polly. And 
Number three, will you be doing any more clean with me videos? I would really like to. It's just knowing what to clean. Like, obviously, I clean stuff. Just kind of what might be long, take long enough or be interesting enough to have a chat alongside my clean or what people might be interested in seeing because there's definitely things I need to do. I need to empty and sort out my kitchen cupboards and give them a clean because I still really haven't moved them around too much from when we moved in. Um, I kind of put everything in cupboards and left them where they are and I haven't really moved them around since then. Um, I need to... Def not defrost but I need to clean out my freezer give that a good sort out and clean and probably use some of the things up that I've got in there um that's something I need to do so yeah I would like to do some more clean with me videos uh, have you got any suggestions on where you'd like me to clean because that's always good to know um another question from Polly is how old is summer so you might have seen summer my border collie in the background of my videos and things like that she is eight almost eight on november the 16th she's quite old now it's gone really fast actually um yeah she's a little monkey still though she acts like a little puppy half the time still and i think she thinks she's human some of the time but she loves her cuddles and she loves to play constantly she doesn't like to lay down and rest <laughs> and she loves to chase things anything helicopters anything you can think of so i mean she's a lot better than she used to be i have to say that but um she just loves a good time she loves a lot of fun and a lot of love and a lot of cuddles i've got another couple of questions from naomi um they said what are your favorite hobbies and a hobby that you wish you could spend more time on so that's the first question so my favorite hobbies oh i actually have a lot of hobbies or a lot of interests at least a few things that i really like i do quite like history um i love uh tudor the tudor period my favorite anything to do with the tudors i absolutely love we went to stratford upon avon a couple a year or two yeah it was i think it was last year and i absolutely loved it it was so nice we went to watch macbeth at the theater it was just lovely. I love all the buildings. All the Tudor buildings are just wonderful and beautiful. And anything to do with them, I just, I don't know. I'm just really interested in all of it, really. Also, Jack the Ripper. I like to, I'm interested in learning about all of it. And I follow YouTube channels that cover Jack the Ripper and all the victims. And the times, Victorian sort of times. I'm just really interested in that as well. And, um... Yeah, so that's two of my interests. Hobby-wise, I love reading. I find it really difficult now, so I don't read as often as I have done. I do have a Kindle, so I just love reading books. My favourite genre of books, or even films, mostly I like dystopian type things, you know, like anything, Hunger Games, or Maze Runner, or anything like yeah, anything dystopian really my absolute favorite film of all time and i love anything to do with this is what well, i would say it's a hobby because i am 39 now and i have loved this since i was 16 uh lord of the rings anything to do with lord of the rings uh, anything i pretty much know a lot of i know a lot of things about lord of the rings now yeah i've watched all the films multiple times when they first came out i've read the books multiple times uh, I have I have a lot a lot of merchandise. I have a lot of special things as well in boxes and packaging and things. I went to Liverpool Comic Con last, not last year. It was this year. It was May. I uh, met some of the cast for the first time, which was just amazing. I absolutely loved it. That was my favourite weekend of my life, definitely. And um, yeah, so Lord of the Rings is up there with my favourite things ever. I love. I also love to write. If I ever get the chance to finish it, I am writing, or have been writing for a very long time now, multiple books. Like, I've got a few stories on the go and a couple of actual, like, novel kind of books. But I feel with writing, I find it really difficult to get in the right frame of mind and be, like, motivated to want to write properly. Um, I've got all the ideas and things. It's just getting them down on paper a bit more. 
we've got quite a way through one of the books it's just the time when I get time to do these things to do writing it's never a time where I think right I'm, I'm in the right frame of mind as well as having the right amount of time and I can sit and do some writing and I will enjoy it um, so I need that I need that to happen in order for me to actually do the writing <laughs> so one day I'm hoping that we'll get to do that so uh, yeah that's probably the hobby that I wish I could spend more time on is the writing because I just want that sense of achievement to finish one finish one of the books and I don't know I feel like they're good ideas obviously I would because I'm writing them but and hopefully other people would enjoy them if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice what would you tell them well, I think I would tell myself probably because my because I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa which is the same if you watch Strictly um, Chris McCausland the comedian it's the same eye condition that he's got um, and he's doing amazing by the way yeah so I was diagnosed when I was 11 or 12 and at, at that time I didn't really you know it didn't really affect me that much it took me till probably till I was about 18 for it to start affecting me a bit more um, but at that point like I never learned to drive I was never allowed to learn to drive which was disappointing because I really wanted to you know you get your independence and your freedom and things like that I think from sort of that point on college age I probably sort of thought well if this is going to happen to me and I'm not going to be able to see is there much point really in trying to do something with my life because what am I going to be able to do I'm not you know um I, I wasn't really sure what to do to be honest I had things I wanted to do and if I'd if I'd have known then that I mean I struggle I do struggle now I have times when you know it's really frustrating when you just can't you just can't see to do something no matter how hard you try you just can't do it but if I knew back then that now at age 39 I would still have some sight left I potentially would have gone and tried harder and gone for the career maybe that I would have wanted so I think the advice that I would have given myself is just to keep going and go for what you want don't let anything get stand in your way and that's advice that anybody should take to be honest if you want to achieve something go for it no matter what nothing can hold you back you can do it like there's a way you can find a way if you really want something enough you can find a way so that's probably the advice I would have given to my younger self so my next question is have you seen a big increase in your food bill like we have in the US people complain here but still go out and buy fast food that costs twice as much do you see it going on there so that is from Sherry and I would say definitely I think post 2021 you know 2020 2021 food prices have did go up skyrocket basically in the UK or well, definitely England I'm not sure about Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland they did go pretty high and I think everybody found it a little bit difficult and I think at the same that it wasn't too long after that that I was diagnosed with celiac disease and the prices of of gluten-free food are ridiculous in my opinion they are three or four times the price of like normal food and it, it really puts you off and I started thinking I can't afford to eat what am I going to eat I don't know I don't know what I'm going to have especially because I was newly diagnosed um it was even more difficult but the food prices in general definitely went up they were pretty high for a while but they started coming back down again not too long ago um it's like they like fluctuate a little bit like they do normally so I think they're higher than they used to be pre-2020 but they are they're not as high as they have been in probably the last but maybe a say a year ago they're not as high as they were then but you definitely still get people going and buying takeaways and things I mean we do ourselves we have a like a takeaway once now once every six weeks uh, we don't go crazy but you do have to have some kind of enjoyment now and again 
I think as long as you don't go crazy and have like takeaways, multiple takeaways a week, and then complain about the price of food, then it's not so bad. Whereas, you know, we only have, we have to have something to look forward to sometimes, don't we? I've heard Canada, the US and Australia have got pretty high food prices. So compared with the UK, I think they theirs is quite a lot higher than ours. So I don't envy you at all having to pay what you pay for food. And also, I think they've reduced packaging sizes. So like you get less in your packets or boxes of food. So you think you're getting the same for the same price. But a lot of the times, if you look at the products closely, you actually get less. So that's something to keep an eye on. And I, when I do my food shop, especially if I do it online, I tend to weigh things up like by price per gram because sometimes even an, something that's on offer is not cheaper than something that's just a bigger pack so I always check those out because it saves me money in the long run yeah so definitely price, food prices are higher than they were but they're not as high now as they have been in the last year I don't think personally anyway Anne has asked um how long have we me and Simon been married and where did we meet? So we've been married. I can't even remember. It's been so long. Um, we met at work. We both worked in Staples. I absolutely loved working in Staples. One of my favourite jobs because I love stationery and books and all that sort of thing. I just love working there and I loved the people I worked with. It was kind of like you know quite a social job so I like I like the customers I feel like I was quite good at my job and yeah I quite enjoyed working there um so we met there and that was so we got married before Hannah no we got married we were together before Hannah was born a couple of years before that and we got married when Hannah was seven months old so we've been I can't even do this so we've been, me and Simon have been married now for 16 and a half years. It's just, it's gone really fast, but at the same time it feels like a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, so Hannah was a little baby at our wedding. Little, tiny little bridesmaid, which was very sweet. Another question from Anne. Do you enjoy cooking? I, it's a, this is a tricky one to answer. I think that some things I enjoy cooking if it's a meal that I love to eat um then I would say I quite enjoy making it, it depends on the circumstances if I'm in a rush if Simon's got to go to work and I haven't got a lot of time to make it then I find it a bit stressful and it makes it less enjoyable if I can take my time and cook something that I like to eat then I would say it's a little bit more enjoyable um overall I would say it's not it's not really a passion of mine cooking it's kind of just something that I fell into having to do um but I also like I like to try and find new meals that we all like um so in that sense I do like cooking but in general if I had the option to not cook and someone else to cook I would probably let them do it <laughs> so come on girlies fingers crossed one day they'll learn to cook properly and make me a lovely meal Ugh, try and move I'm just shift about a bit i'm on the i'm on the settee here and you're perched on the window so i'm a little bit stiff now so i need to get my cup of tea and have a little drink a minute huh, before that goes cold right another question so I've got a question from Simone. She has asked, was it your plan to move into your new house or was it a forced situation that you had to buy a home? And are you pleased now that you have your own home or do you find it overwhelming to pay off a mortgage? I did touch on this in a really old video, like a, one of the ones when we were just moving into the house. So we still live in the area that we lived in previously, before we lived in this house. We were in a rented accommodation, which we'd lived in for almost 10 years. And 
unfortunately, the landlady wasn't very nice. And we, the house, the house was pretty much, I mean, we tried to keep it, you know, clean and tidy as best as we could. Um, but there were things that needed doing in the, in the house we, that was never done. Basically, the boiler often broke down and things like that. And we were, you know, we had no other options, really. We couldn't afford to move. We couldn't afford to buy a house at the time. So we were kind of stuck where we were. Um, and, you know, with rising bills and things a couple of years ago, we did ask the landlady if we could put a water or get a water meter put in. It can be reversed after two years because obviously we weren't planning on moving out. So in our minds, we were just doing something to save ourselves some money um, on the water bill. And, you know, every little thing that we could find to do to save money at the time. And she came back, well, the, the estate agent came back through her and said, no, she doesn't want one. I mean, this was just a courtesy ask, really, because we were legally within our rights just to have one put in as the water bill payer. But we wanted to just go through them just, you know, because we know what sort of a person our landlady was. We wanted to just sort of make her aware, really, that that's what we wanted to do. Um, next thing we knew, we were in a position where all of a sudden, out of the blue, the landlady said, we need the house back. Uh, they gave us a Section 21 notice, which is um, basically just we have to leave within two months. And this was not long before Christmas. Um, it was, yeah, it was a horrible time. Um, so it was a forced situation, really just because we want to wanted a water meter put in. Um, and since speaking to other people that live around our area, they have also, um, I mean, they've said to me, she's a nasty person, really. Not just for what she's done, but in general, they've known her a long time. So, and although, although we, we were not happy at the time, now that we've got our own place, and I mean, it was hard trying to get this place, really. But we are happy in our house. We've got our own home and we are very lucky, consider ourselves very lucky that we've been able to get our own house. We can now look after it and make improvements on the house how we and how, how we wanted it. We weren't even allowed to paint in the other house. So, yeah, it's nice to be able to put your own stamp on a place. And I think, actually... Even though we didn't like her, she wasn't a very nice person and we had to leave where we'd lived for a long time where the girls kind of grew up really. All of a sudden, um, she did us a favour in the long run, didn't she really? Because the rent was going up and up and up and now I feel like we're better off on a mortgage. It's lower than, the our mortgage is lower than rent and I don't feel... Yeah, I don't feel overwhelmed paying off a mortgage because I feel like I feel like in a more secure place. Whereas paying rent, you're not you know you're not gaining anything. You're just you'll have you've got somewhere to live, but after you've paid ten years worth of rent, you haven't got much to show for it. Whereas you pay ten years off of a mortgage, and you know you're nearly there. You've got you've, you're paying towards your house that you can then keep. So I definitely think I'm not overwhelmed at all and I like having a, a goal or goals to work towards and this to me just feels like a goal working towards paying off your mortgage and then the house belongs to you. Obviously not everybody is lucky enough to be able to buy a house and there's so many people like I worry for Hannah and Rebecca in the future how they are going to manage to buy anywhere the way that the world is currently. So I don't know, I don't know how, how it's going to be in, you know, to say five, ten years time when they want to buy property. I just hope that it, the system has changed a little bit and allowing people to actually be able to get on the ladder. Okay, I've got three more questions. I've got one from Kim who asks, how do you do your homemade chips? No special way, to be honest. I've got 
a deep fat fryer which is a lot of people don't like to use but personally I have no problem with it my mum used one when I grew up and as long as you watch them they're safe enough and I only use them once a week so it's not unhealthy for us you know everything in moderation and all that um, so basically I just cut up my chips and deep fry them simple as nothing special to them but they are delicious definitely I, chips potatoes is my favorite food in the world uh, but chips is definitely up there with one of my top potato products so yep that's how I do my chips next question is from my friend Kat and she says what is the plan for your garden? Well, this is an interesting question because I don't feel like we fully know what our plan is for the garden just yet. Um, I know that we obviously we've been moving all the slate or trying to move all the slate and things and clear over. If you look out from our house to the garden, over the right hand side, there's all like the slate and the artificial grass. And we've been trying to sort of clear that area because our plan is to put a garden room there and I want to use that space, the garden room space as sort of half of it as a dining room area and the other half I want to potentially put a little sofa in or a sofa bed or something and maybe a television so people have got somewhere quiet to go and do some work or watch, watch something or if the girls have a friend round or I need to go and do something quiet or a video or writing or whatever it might be there's a, a quiet space out there to do that then um and the what we use is our current dining room which is behind me um that's going to be potentially blocked off whilst we use the garden room as the dining room and me and simon are going to be using that as a tiny little bedroom which is fine, we don't need much stuff to be honest. All you need is a bed, someone to put your clothes, and that's it really. Um, and then the girls are gonna have their bedrooms upstairs, so one each. So we live in a two bedroom house, and that's all the space that we've got. So this is what we could afford at the time we bought the house, and so we have to make the best of what we've got. Um, and I'd rather us be downstairs with summer, and so on yeah I just rather it be that way um, and then the girls have got the bedrooms upstairs which are bigger a bigger space for them each so the garden on the right on the left hand it's hard to really imagine it unless you've seen the garden so there'll be a garden room on the left hand side kind of like facing towards with it like a door facing towards the other side of the garden like on the left side of the garden and then where where there's like a metal shed in the bottom right hand corner what I want to do is to remove that in the future um, we get quite a lot of sun in that corner especially during the summer um, and I want to maybe put a little vegetable plot or something down the bottom there I feel like that would be a good space to use for that growing some fruit and veg and things um, on the left hand side of the garden just before the raised bed there's quite a lot of slate there as well i'd like to have some sort of a grassy area because i know that summer would appreciate some actual grass in the garden even though she's a pickle and she likes to dig so we'd have to manage to stop her from doing that um so a little grassy area would be nice and also use the raised bed for growing some other other fruits and veg and plants as well i'd love to grow some more peas we've done that in the past and some runner beans and things like that and potatoes is one thing I really want to be able to grow because obviously I love potatoes so to be able to grow my own would be brilliant the garden's not really level so where the patio doors are they've raised the patio up I mean they've covered the damp roof course so we're going to have to try and correct that at some point in the future because that could cause problems they've left a little bit of a gap where they're like so you've got the patio patio door here and then the slabs are there so there's a bit of a gap all the way along the front the back of the house where they've just like filled it in with slate so we can get all the slate out of there that will help for the time being um but long term we're going to need to think about removing that and leveling it back down again 
yeah, the corner of the garden where we've had the fence kind of fixed, where there was a tree. Um, because it's tucked away around the corner and Simon's going to need some sort of a, like where we're going to potentially remove the metal shed from the bottom, we might get like a little, a little storage shed or something to put there because it's not going to be for, visible for us looking out into the garden because it's sort of tucked away around the corner. So that's an option for that, I think. But otherwise, we haven't fully formed our garden plans yet. We're just sort of working on the we know we want a garden room we know we need to clear that area and level it out um and just prep it ready for that really it's not going to be happening now till next year i just think the weather's been so unpredictable this year um and we haven't really had a there's not been like oh we've definitely got a good couple of weeks here where we can get that garden room done and the weather is going to be great for it so i don't feel like we've had that this year been a funny old year with the weather hasn't it um and then over the winter obviously it's going to be just a bit cold damp and i mean i've already noticed when it's rained it's just filled up with water so we don't want to be digging around in that so it would definitely be something to wait till next year for now maybe springtime will start on that again so that is sort of the plans for the garden we haven't fully formed the ideas yet but we are working on them. I just feel like we're just working on everything, and planning everything at once. So it's just nothing is happening because we're doing too many things at once. So my last question is from Tracy who asks, how do you start a meal plan? Her son is quite fussy apparently. And so I kind of work on just write out the days of the week um, and then think about the meals that you like or things that you would both eat together and try and incorporate some of those and maybe try like a couple of times a week to think right today we're going to introduce something new and just see what you think we'll always have some sort of backup thing just in case um but yeah I try and go right what have we got going on in the next week so I'm going to plan my week plan my week do mon Monday to Sunday and go right Monday so and so has got to go out early so we need to have dinner early or a quick dinner on Tuesday or quick tea or whatever because something's happening then so I first of all see what we're doing that week then I would think about the meals that we like are there any meals that we like to have each week that are like you know fit in well with your routine and slot them into place and then see what you're left with and I try and make sure I definitely do a few meals with vegetables during the week because I like to make sure that the girls get a lot of vegetables and yeah you know you gotta think um there's another channel I watch mum life and more and her name is Claire and she's got fussy children as well um I think most people with children go through this and have fussy children at some point and they they tend to like like her, I know that her, one of her children doesn't like potatoes she offers garlic bread and things like that instead of potatoes as a way of giving them something extra to eat that they will eat and also carbohydrates which is a great you know great thing to do the most important thing is that your children are eating even if it's not necessarily something that everybody else is eating so the most important thing is that your children are fed and happy and it doesn't really matter Ex you know, obviously excessive amounts of like sugary products are not great but if you can get your child to eat anything or try anything new or something healthy then you've done you've won really haven't you um even a tiniest bite over a long period of time is shown to increase the chances of liking that food in the future so definitely just try small little things maybe make a plate of lots of little picky foods that they can try one bit of pepper or one bit of cucumber or you know a multitude of little things to try um so that's what i would suggest so start from your basics what are we doing this week and then work out things that you might definitely both like or all like depending on how many of you there are and then go from like what are you willing to do or make or buy 
and work from there. Sometimes if you're working or if you're in a rush, you may not have time to do tons of things. So just do what you're able to do really to make sure your child is happy and fed and well. That's what we can do. Anyway, that is my last question and I've really enjoyed filming this little video. Hope it's not going to be too long for you all. So I'll try and keep it as short as I can. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to do another one, the, one of these in the future. And I will see you really soon in my next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.